G'day, hope you had a good Christmas. I got all my Rellos instead of buying me undies and socks to all chuck in their 10 bucks. And my wife chucked in and I end up getting a three roller mill. I'm just gonna quickly put it together. Now I'm learning as I go, but it's a pretty simple concept. And just when you get them, don't worry about them falling apart like that. They can slide apart. Uh, they're meant to, they don't, they're not solid till you bolt them down. And then they're right to go. So let's get to it. Oh, and you also usually get a hopper, which comes apart like this. It's aluminium. It's just covered in the blue stuff to stop it getting scratched. But that doesn't really matter, does it? So uh, we'll put that together as well. So I've just got a square bit of wood over the bucket. Put the mill where I've wanted it. Drawing a line around the edges with some pencil. So I know where the hole is going to go. Made it so the rollers spin freely. All three of them. Move that off. I don't know if you can see those lines with all this glare. I'll square that up and cut that out. Now I could use a router or a jigsaw or whatever you want. I'm just going to drill some holes in the corner. I'm in a hurry. I can't be bothered setting my router up and cut the rest out. So I've just drilled four holes and I'll just cut between them. And I'm just using an old jigsaw to cut around. Quick sand. And there you go. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it doesn't have to be. It's a mill. Functionality. So all that's left to do now is to drill the four holes carefully. I'll measure them out, drill the four holes through it, and then I can bolt it to this. And that's just about it. Pretty simple. So I've drilled the four holes. I measured them, and they were about 74 mil uh, that way, and 165.5 that way. All I've got to do now is get the bolts and bolt her on. The bolts measure just under 6mm, so I draw them out at 6mm. So there's a little bit of play if I need any movement. Um, I can always drill them out a bit bigger if need be, just to give it a bit more movement to get everything square. And as far as safety goes with MDF, you don't want to be breathing in the fibres. They're very fine fibres, and you don't want to breathe them in. I don't even want to drink them, to tell you the truth. This is only a mock-up, well I might end up peeping it if it works well enough, but what I'll probably do is just with some PVA glue, uh, I don't have any ceiling paint at the moment, but it's just PVA glue, if you just paint the edges, um, you won't get any fibres off there and it'll be fine. You can use PVA as a sealer, no problems at all. Okay, so you might be able to see where I just painted around inside there with some PVA glue just to seal it. Dries really quick. And I grab some M6 bolts, which is what the thread is in this particular mill. I've got them 25 mil because this wood's about 15 mil, and so that'll be 10 mil into the mill itself. And some washers. The washers probably aren't necessary, but we'll see how we go. So here's the bottom. Don't tighten them all down fully tight just yet. Turn her over and just make sure your wheels still spin freely, or your rollers I should say, and you haven't got much gap between the roller so there's no movement. You want it to spin but you don't want big gaps down there where the grain and dust can fill up. It's going to happen but uh, you just want them down to spin freely in as small a gap as possible. So now that's fine. I'll tighten them down and just check it again. If not, I might have to loosen it and jig it a bit and tighten them up again. So I turn it over, tighten them up, and they still spin and the gap's minimal. Should be right to go. Now this particular mill, as you can probably see, has got settings marked on it. So what you usually do is move this around, keeping an eye on your roller at the side, at the front here. And move it to give you the biggest gap. 
And what you'll also notice as you go backwards and forwards is the roller is on some sort of cam and it actually moves backwards and forwards a little bit too. So when you're adjusting, you actually want to make sure you're adjusting it so the roller is moving forward because this is your drive roller and it crushes between the bottom roller and your drive roller. You don't want to move it back towards the rear roller. So on this particular mill, it's anti-clockwise on this side, it moves it forward, and on the drive handle side, it's clockwise. You move it. Um, and from what I've read, it's the same with the uh, proper monster mills. Now I've already had a go with this and a muck around with the crush, and I'm actually going to set it there at the biggest setting because it works for the mold I've got at the moment but if you did want to you could use feeler gauges to test the gap between the top drive roller and the bottom roller and you might go 40 thousandth or 45,000 of an inch which is just over a millimeter I think from memory and yeah, it's a bit hard on this, but now it's tied out. You just put the feeler gauges in between there and move it to where you want it. And you can mark it. You can mark it with a texter or a scribe or a, some people center punch uh, to the size you want. As I said, I'd be moving it that way though. Backwards. Any clockwise on this side and clockwise on the other side to bring the roller forward. You'll notice it. You'll see it. I'll try and catch it on film. I don't know if you'll be able to see. I don't know if you'll notice. So we move that, it's moving backwards. I move it there. It's actually moving forward and up. And backwards and up. It's forward and up, turning it clockwise. Any clockwise on there is backwards and up. So you always want to adjust it towards your drive roller forward. And again, you can use the feeler gauge to do whatever gap you want. Mark it where you want it. Then we've got to put the guard on, tighten it up. So here's other pieces for the hopper. Some tiny little bends in it, they just happen in trans transporting it, it's alright. Now I'm just going to peel this blue stuff off, the protective layer. Nice and shiny. First thing I'm going to do is attach these side guards to these straight parts. You can pop rivet, I'm just going to use the bolt, little bolts that came with it. Just like that. Now it's up to you whether you put the bolt on the, in, the nut on the inside. I'd rather the smooth head on the inside. So we've got two of those now. Next bit's just to screw the side of the hopper onto there, of course. So there's the two side bits. Let's just simply finish it with the other bit. Okay, so there we are all together. Now to put on the mill. So we'll just take these off. Slide this on. And I made a mistake. I can see now that these triangle bits shouldn't be on the outside, they should go on the inside. So I'll just change them over and we'll be right. Okay. 
There you go, on the inside you can see where those pieces went. All right. So I've bolted the guard on, just simply bolt there, bolt there and a bolt there. The same on the other side. And these are the bolts that lock your roller in position. Now once the guard's on, as I said before, you can't test the gap with a feeler gauge but you can still adjust it so if this was this is at the biggest setting now if it was too big I could uh, take these out again and just turn that to adjust it but anyway I've got it where I want it so these will hold the grind mill in place Just make sure it's where I want it, tighten that, and that's just a little lock screw, little lock nut. Hand tight's fine, you don't really want to, it's al aluminium this, you don't want to thread your holes or stuff them by over tightening, and there's no need to anyway. So that's it. Okay. All that's left to do is attach the handle. Easy process. Tighten it up a little bit. And tighten the lock lock back down. So there we go. Beautiful actually it goes that way. <laughs> also we nearly forgot it comes with a rubber for the top of the uh, hopper. Just to save yourself, cut yourself. Although I've noticed they have been rounded off. They're not as sharp as they could be, which is a good thing. Lovely. Look at that. Just like I bought one. So what we're going to do now is test it. Got a bit of Marisota. A bit of Cara for Special. Care of Don Peter. My good friend Don Peter. Thank you very much mate. And uh, we'll give it a test eh? See how it goes. You can see there we've got some Marisota. Uncracked. We'll run it through and see how it goes. I've just got it sitting over a bucket. I might eventually make it fit something better. Uh. There it is there, the crush, it's pretty good. There's a lot that are hold that are just cracked, which is fine. Some are cracked in half, but there's not much you can do. That's good. That should be fine. There's some uncracked carafe. These look a bit fatter too. Now there's the carafa. Now you might be going, Jesus, that's fine. But what happens with this highly roasted grain? It's very brittle. Once you crack it, it virtually falls apart. The darker you get, usually, the more brittle it is. And you won't be keeping full uh, husks. That's just the way it is. Oh, that smells good though. Good. Looks like we're in action. Oh, cool. Happy with that works well um, got a mill look I'll still be getting my grain uh, 
at the moment through my grain book uh, simply for the fact that I like to brew different beers from time to time, from very often, <laughs> from time to time, very often, and, and there's no point in me buying 50 kilo or one grain and 50 kilo or another grain. Um, so at the moment, I'll still be getting my grain through my home brew shop uh, in bits and pieces. It actually was work is going to work out cheaper for me at the moment to do that. Uh, but what it will allow me to do is instead of going once a fortnight like I do, I might only have to go once a month, uh, and I can get two or three batches, and I don't have to crush them. Uh, until I'm ready to use them and they'll last a lot longer and be a lot fresher when I brew. But anyway, as I said, that was from Keg King, um, the mill I've got, the three roller mill. Uh, this, virtually the same thing works for the two roller mill from what I've seen. Uh, so if you want to grab one, good, they're a good investment, I reckon. And they work well. <laughs> Shit, I haven't shown a home brew on camera for a while. So cheers, this is a um, pale ale I brewed. Looks a bit dark from that side of the camera as usual. Um, oh, Cascade and Amarillo and a tiny bit of Indian coriander and uh, sweet orange peel and it's lovely I'll uh, have the recipe up for this pretty soon um, and I think I did a video on it too I've got a lot of editing to do uh, alright, cheers Happy New Year it might be a bit hard to see but that's 2 kilo in there there's plenty of room for probably another kilo at least. Or more. Now I'm just going to crush this two kilo and see how long it takes by hand. Yeah, done.